I don't usually cry, but there were tears going down my face from seeing the massive destruction. I saw the cars and everything around there were just spinning around and moving, and, and I was sort of moving with them. Oh, everything flew! Unless you've actually seen these things, even on film, you can't really realize what has happened here. The people who lived in this house behind me were watching television a week ago today. Now they have no home in which to watch television. They have no television. Their home, their life, has been totally destroyed by one of God's natural disasters. May 15th, 1968. Charles City, Iowa. A thriving tractor community of 8,000 in the northeastern corner of the Hawkeye State in Floyd County. This community, city, downtown, will be forever changed as a half-mile twister barrels into town. This is F5 Chronicles. Charles City, Iowa, 1968 a community of 8,000 in Floyd County, 140 miles northeast of Des Moines. Known as the birthplace of the gasoline tractor, it was a hub of industry and perseverance where factories thrived and families built strong roots. On May 15th, however, the atmosphere grew volatile, warm, humid, prime for catastrophe. A powerful low pressure system over Eastern Nebraska drew moist Gulf air northward. A warm front across northern Iowa pushed temperatures to the mid-80s, creating unstable conditions. Surface winds from the southeast clashed with a 100 mile per hour jet stream aloft, generating intense wind shear, the key ingredient for violent supercells and tornadoes. Talk about a weatherman's paradise. Conditions were extreme. The energy was through the roof signaling severe instability with 3,000 joules per kilogram of what we call convective available potential energy. Dew points, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, neared 70 degrees, fueling these thunderstorms. Storms surged across 10 states. Spotters near Hampton, Iowa, 30 miles west, reported funnels by 4.10 p.m. But Charles City remained unaware. Warning systems in 1968 were inadequate at best. Without Doppler radar or mobile alerts, communication relied on radio broadcasts, often missed during daily routines. A tornado watch was issued at 3 p.m., but factories, schools, and homes, they continued as usual, unprepared for the approaching disaster. At 4.10 p.m. Central Daylight Time, a large wedge F5 tornado forms north of Dumont, Iowa, with winds exceeding 261 miles per hour and a width of a half a mile. This multi-vortex storm devastated rural areas before targeting Charles City with unprecedented force. The tornado strikes Ardale's eastern edge, where two funnels are sighted simultaneously. One farm loses all structures except the house. With debris hurled across the road, and boards embedded into trees. Another farm sees buildings destroyed, a tree collapsing onto the house, and residents treated for shock. A third farm's outbuildings are thrown a half a mile, and a fourth suffers uprooted trees and demolished sheds. The funnels combine into a 400-yard wide force, briefly lifting near Marble Rock before resuming its path. At 4.50 p.m., it strikes Charles City leveling 60% of the town. 372 homes destroyed, 188 severely damaged, and 356 with minor damage. 58 businesses, eight churches, three schools, and the police station are demolished. Downtown is reduced to rubble. 1,250 vehicles are mangled. The Oliver Tractor Plant, a cornerstone in Charles City, sustains $2 million in damage. Cedar River bridges collapse and riverbanks are scarred. Debris travels 80 miles. A check reaches Winona, Minnesota. A receipt lands just west of La Crosse, Wisconsin. 13 residents perish. 450 are injured with 76 requiring hospitalization. The tornado continues. 
devastating Elma's west side at 5.25 p.m., destroying four blocks and ruining every tree in its path with $1.5 million in damage. It dissipates south of Chester, 65 miles from its origin. Seven minutes later, another F5 strikes Owine, Iowa, 60 miles southeast of Charles City, claiming four lives. Hail damage wreaks havoc near Elma, devastating multiple farms. The outbreak leaves Iowa reeling, with Charles City at its core. As evening falls, the extension of the devastation becomes clear. 13 lives are lost in Charles City. Of the 3,600 families, 2,200 are affected. 450 are injured, with 76 requiring hospital care. Floyd County Hospital, with only 89 beds, treats two to 300 patients using doors as makeshift stretchers. Central Park transforms into a triage center. Within 20 minutes, looting emerges, prompting authorities to secure downtown. Yet, Charles City perseveres. Residents comb through debris. The Red Cross delivers aid, and volunteers arrive in droves. In Elma, a four by six block area on the west side is stripped of trees, with nearly every home damaged totaling $1.5 million. Governor Hughes requests $2 million in federal aid, and President Johnson declares Iowa a disaster area. A local EMT recalls the support was extraordinary. Dr. Ted Fajita, creator of the Fajita scale, confirms the F5 rating, noting spiral ground marks as evidence of multiple vortices. Notably, while churches are destroyed, several bars remain intact a striking contrast in the town's landscape. Charles City had only the briefest notice before the tornado slammed into their town yesterday. Why was the tornado so deadly? Its timing was critical. Most F5 tornadoes occur between 3 and 9 p.m. And this one struck at 4.47 p.m. during rush hour, catching residents. Sirens sounded, but the storm severity was underestimated and spotters failed to detect the merger of two funnels into a single massive vortex. It was the perfect tornado hitting at the perfect time to a growing city in the heart of Iowa. Technology offered little help. Radar systems in 1968 could not detect rotation and warnings relied on radio, often unheard. Experts attribute the storm's power to a volatile combination, a warm front plenty of instability and intense wind shear. Iowa has seen only two other F5s since. Jordan in 1976 and Parkersburg in 2008, making this event exceptionally rare. Well, Mrs. Griffin, how, how, do you, how are you taking all of this now? Uh, uh, what, what are your feelings now? Well, we're just thankful that we're all here. That's, that's the most important thing. Sure, we lost a lot of personal things and old family treasures and things like that, but we're all here, and that's more than a lot of them have got right now. The people needed the help, and the bosses up home said, go down and help them any way you can. And yet you turn around and you see the people that have suffered this destruction, and they're smiling. They're saying, we're going on from here. We're going to rebuild this city into something that is marvelous, great for Iowa. Charles City's recovery began immediately. With 60% of the town destroyed, residents faced immense loss. Yet their resolve was unshaken. Federal grants, combined with donations and volunteer efforts, fueled the reconstruction of homes, businesses, and infrastructure. By the early 1970s, Main Street regained its vibrancy and the Oliver Tractor Plant resumed operations, symbolizing the town's industrial backbone. Today, Charles City's population remains steady at 7,000 people. A plaque in Central Park honors the 13 lives lost, serving as a focal point for remembrance. Annual events unite the community, reflecting on both the tragedy and the strength that followed. The emotional toll lingers for many, but the town's unity has endured. The 1968 disaster spurred significant advancements in tornado forecasting. The limitations exposed in Charles City, reliance on inadequate radar and radio, pushed meteorologists to develop Doppler radar, mobile alerts, and extended warning times. 
These innovations, born from the town's loss, have saved countless lives in subsequent decades. Here in beautiful Central Park, Charles City continues to stand tall. Although 13 lives were lost and 60% of the city decimated, we continue to see a thriving community. Join us next time on F5 Chronicles. F5 Chronicles, documenting America's most powerful tornadoes. If this story resonated, like, share, and subscribe. New episodes air monthly. Next, we explore the 2008 Parkersburg F5 tragedy.